hope you had that, enjoyed that fantastic conversation and you learned a few tips on something, you know, how to make something really nice. We know it's the festive season and one of the ways to mark the festive season is with food, food and more food. So we hope you get a cooking and you get to tag us so we see that our tasty segment is not a waste of our effort. We have a guest in the studio and we're going to be having a very interesting conversation but we'll go on a very short break and when we come back the conversation starts in full swing. Please stay with us. Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Now we have a very, very seasoned guest and we're having a conversation. We're looking at getting ahead as a woman in the corporate world as well as in your personal life. So basically, all it takes for you to get ahead as a woman and no better person to discuss this than our guest today. Now she's currently the chief executive officer and the executive secretary of the American Business Council, the voice of American business in Nigeria and the affiliate of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. Prior to this role, she was the Corporate Affairs Director for Pfizer in Nigeria, Ghana, East Africa, and Southern African markets, responsible for all public affairs and communication engagements in about 20 countries, and represented Pfizer on the Board of Directors of the American Business Council. She obtained a Bachelor of Arts degree in English and Literature, a Master of Arts degree in English from the University of Ibadan, Nigeria, a postgraduate diploma in Mass Communication from the University of Lagos, and a Master's of Science degree in Mass Communication, specializing in public relations and advertising from the same university. She has basically enough experience to help us navigate the very murky waters we'll be paddling around today. She's married with children, and her name today is Mrs. Margaret Obiageli Olele. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. So I'm going to let out a little secret. I don't know if people know this. We're actually namesakes. My name is Obiageli as well. So I'm very excited That's to great. be meeting my namesake. <laughs> Fantastic. Are you the last one? Sort of, yeah. in a sort of kind of way. <laughs> they always give that to the last one. Because we came to eat all the food and all us <laughs> came to do the work. Absolutely. Good to have you. So you have a I'm very, happy. very rich profile. And, you know, it's, it, I'm trying to imagine, because you look really young, and I'm trying to imagine how you started and getting to where you are today. How was it for you starting? Lots of people did not have guidance from parents. Lots of people had to find their way by themselves. How was your journey? Did you have guidance from parents or was it something that you know, life just happened? I, I would really say that my parents were great or are great because my mom is still alive. I, I had parents that were very unusual, um, purely from a, a Catholic home. But at the same time, they were very um, interested in ensuring that we had um, what the world out there, you know, uh, would be interested in. So, for instance, we'd take wine in the house. We'd take, uh, my, my dad would actually bring, uh, you know, the stout and the shandy in front and would <laughs> would take them. So it's like by the time we got to the university, there was no big deal. There was no, oh, we want to see what this is like. And, you know, my father, you know, though he read agri-economics, was prepared to even go through literature, go through different things, so that at least you're able to um, have those very, uh, very, very critical conversations. As for my mom, she, disciplinarian, no messing around. She also was a professional, working then at Leventies and you know retired at a senior managerial level. But you would have to clean the house. You would have to. She no. In fact, she would beat you to a pub if you're not doing the right things. So including things like washing the car, that's not meant for a guy. Everybody would learn to wash the car. Everybody would learn to cook, you know, irrespective of your sex. So we didn't start with the understanding that this is what is meant for a woman, this is what is meant for a man. I, I'm really glad that you mentioned this because this is a conversation that we have in this day and age, conversation of gender roles and people say, what should a man do? What should a woman do? In your perspective, are there roles that are reserved for men in the family setting? Because like you mentioned, in your family, everybody washed the cars. It wasn't a thing of boys wash cars, girls do the dishes. We're starting to see a lot of feministic, uh, feminism approaches, you know, feminism stands coming up and coming up really strong. So in your perspective, should there be any disparity in gender roles in the home and in the family? See, um, feminism, the way some people 
um, exhibit or show what feminism is not my kind of feminism. You see, feminism comes with a lot of responsibility and understanding that you are a woman. But being a woman, you have a lot to offer. And in terms of roles, really, I mean, I would say, again, I came from a very unusual home. My father cooked. My father went to the market. But that didn't mean that he was not respected by his wife. In fact, there was, there was clear respect at every level. So we knew who we were. The point is, see a human being, first of all, as a human being and not um, a woman or a man. Look at it from the other side. What would you like if you were on the other side? I think that was really the way we you know, um, got the understanding of how to um, relate with people and how to grow. And so that was, we started, we started thinking in that way. And when I'm in the room with guys, I don't feel like, oh, I mean, growing up, I don't feel that there was something different. You know, I went to a female secondary school and, and all that. And I, I, in spite of that, through the university, I, I had quite a couple of friends that were men, guys, you know. But I never found it odd to be in their music because, you know, I kind of felt we are human beings, you know. Okay, mm. you mentioned something that your idea of feminism should be see me first as a human being before you see me as a woman. Or in the case of men, see me first as a human being before you see me as a man. In the course of your career, rising through the ranks in the corporate world, did you always encounter people who saw you in this light? Or did your gender have formed some sort of stumbling block that you had to cross over? You know, while you were just talking about it, I, I remembered certain things. And that was, that's why I'm smiling. I, I worked 17 years before I, before I joined Pfizer in, in a, a Japanese company. And, you know, the typical understanding of the, the Japanese towards women, it's, it's, it's more like, you know, in, in Japan, most women are housewives. But they are, you know, I mean, they're they are getting out of it. So for several, for this close to 17 years or so, I was the only female on the board and the management board. But it, it never made me feel different, right? Um, but the good thing was that I got married um, while on, on the job. And I remember the, um, the French deputy managing director we had at that time telling my Japanese boss, the MD, that, hmm, I think you better start looking for someone else. Because now she's going to tell you, three months after, oh, my, I, I'm taking my child to the hospital. The child is ill. Oh, I couldn't come to work because my husband did this. You know, so start looking for someone else. And it was weird because the, my Japanese MD told me. And, I, you know, I was like, these guys don't know who I am. And they don't know, you know, my background. So first of all, I, I got back to work one month or so after I had my child. And luckily, my mom, I, I had a, you know, she retired then, and she was very helpful and everything. But even then, you know, I, it didn't make any difference. If anything, it, it, it made me even more determined to show that, you know, I could deliver results and deliver even better than they can imagine or could ever have imagined. And, you know, I, I, I left the organization even seven years or so after I left, it took them a while before they even had another woman on the board, wow. on, the, on the team, the management team. So basically, the old boys club is in almost every place. It's not just in Nigeria. It's in different parts of the world as well. Let's look at practical steps on how, you, I don't know if you experienced this as well, but there have been women who have complained about the fact that certain comments have been made. Now, imagine this man making a comment saying that um, the moment you get married, you won't be able to deliver as much mm -hmm. because your priority becomes your family. How do you advise young women who are still finding their feet in the corporate world to be able to handle comments like this? Because the first thing is, sometimes it gets to you and you're tempted to react emotionally. So what would you say are some of the tips you would give to young girls, young women in the corporate world to be able to handle this? Now, it's not, this is not a battle of the sexes. It's not a women against men Absolutely. conversation. No. But the fact is that, yes, women have been marginalized for the longest time in the corporate world, in the politics um, arena, and in several other parts. So we're trying to give women the opportunity that is rightfully mm -hmm. theirs. So how would you advise women to be able to you know, handle situations like this where they are hearing weird comments about themselves? I, I will tell you something that I'm not, I'm not perfect, which means that uh, it, sometimes you will really let the emotion you know, um, out there. But one thing I learned from one of my colleagues, a guy, he said, you know what, you can be passionate about something, but don't be emotional about it. 
And I mean, women are creatures of passion, right? So show it as you can. And let that really get into your, your role and your job. And you'd find out that you know, you're able to deliver even better through passion. And then you put some kind of structure around your passion. But don't go you know, shedding um, precious drops, like what I usually call them, just because you feel that somebody is going to pity you. In fact, it could be counterproductive. So as you, as you begin to grow, as you begin to grow in your career, um, please, by no means, hold on to your, don't, don't leave your passion. It is one essential trick that the, 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 a woman has, and you can leverage that in getting things done. But try not to be emotional about things. Be, try to put your, con, your emotion under some control and begin to say to yourself, they won't get to me. I mean, I, I, I can see scenarios in my head where, you know, people know that, yeah, if I say this, this person is going to flip. And at one of the board meetings, this guy just went reading and saying certain things. And I mean, definitely I was, I was so angry. But then I said to myself, this is the reaction he wants. So I took, I actually moved back, almost like physically moving back. And then I, I got up, I mean, I, I and then looked at him and smiled. I was very happy with my, it took a lot, I can tell you, because I'm not someone who has that disposition. But over the years, you learn to build it, because at the end of the day, you, you'd respect yourself, and then people respect you. So basically, we should also learn sometimes not to react in the way that people expect us to react. Absolutely. So when they're intentionally trying to get on your nerves, making mm -hmm. nasty comments about how you know, you're not fit for the job and all that, mm -hmm. maybe we should actually focus on showing them just how fit we are and ignoring certain comments, choosing our, mm -hmm. our fights. Mm -hmm. Let's look at um, also the, the pay gap. According to the World Economic Forum reports, there's also a gender pay gap. So we find in situations where some men are earning more than women. You know, lots of companies and lots of institutions, they're both doing the same job, they both have same qualifications, but because he's a man, he's earning more. I, I watched an interview where Oprah said her co-host was earning more than her, and when she complained, they asked, are you a woman, are you a man, are you married, do you have kids? So how do we bridge this gap, really? I, I think we need to improve our, negotiate, our skills for negotiation. You know, the thing is, when a woman likes a job, she just wants to get to do the job, right? And then halfway in between, it, you just realize that you've been short -changed. Short -changed. Exactly. You know, so I, I, again, that's where I said we should, yeah, we should kind of uh, rein our passion, be a bit more um, business-like in the way we engage and negotiate, uh, you know, things like that. Do a bit more due diligence, understanding, you know, the landscape. Okay, how much is being paid for this kind of um, job? How much, you know, do, are people earning? What are salaries like? Average salaries and, and things. And then, and then you you go for the books. All right. We have um, information that you're going to be speaking at the Hands on Deck conference, and I'm so excited about that. I mean, there's so much I want to ask you off the top of my head. You know, questions surrounding how uh, women who are, you know, how people get scared of women, get scared of getting married because you think, well, when you get married, it's going to slow down your career. But you've been able to prove some of these theories wrong. And I'm excited because I think you're going to be speaking about a lot of these at the Hands on mm. Deck conference. So tell us about it. When is it happening? Where is it happening? It's, it's going to be up, um, happening on Wednesday from 12 o'clock at the Muzan Aji Hall. Yeah. So Wednesday, 12 o'clock, Muzan Center, Aji Hall, yeah. and you're going to be speaking and as I'm going well. to be speaking, and I, I, I believe they have a lot of um, very great speakers as well. All yeah. right. So if you want to be a part of this conference, we've heard enough to convince you. This is definitely a conversation we want to continue, but unfortunately, we're running out of time. So please do well to follow Hands on Deck on all social media platforms to find out more information. Registration is free. Attendance is free. So register and attend. You need to register before you, you attend. It's happening on Wednesday the 7th, Ajib, Center, uh, Ajib Hall, Muson Center. Yes. How can people get to follow you on social media? Uh, actually, I'm not very hot on Facebook. My okay. daughter is. <laughs> At some <laughs> point, I'm not even sure she's, I think she's moved on to Instagram. So <laughs> yeah. I but I do a lot on LinkedIn. And, oh, brilliant. Um, yeah, I think she also, I, I'm, I do a bit of Twitter. Okay. So, yeah. 
So they can connect with you on LinkedIn, LinkedIn and, and on Twitter. Twitter. Yes. Very quickly before we let you go, I still, because I'm a young girl and a married girl as well, lots of people complain about how, including me, we get scared sometimes thinking, I don't want to get married now because I have so much I want to achieve. I'm scared that marriage might slow me down. What would you say to some of us who have this fear? I, I believe, first of all, you need to, to know who you're getting married to. Um, people start off with getting married to who they imagine they want to get, get married to. So they create a character, not eventually a, a human being. And when that character kind of fizzles out, then they begin to get upset. So in their head, they create, but not the physical person. So you need to understand who you're going to, who you're even dating, who you're going out with. What does he think about what you want to be like in three years? You should be having that kind of conversation. Of course, some people would say, yeah, you know, we had all those kinds of conversations. He agreed that well, this was how it was going to be. And then later he said, oh, you have to take care of the children. But, I mean, if you're, you know, really uh, perceptive, women are. And if you really want it, you will know, you know, who's telling the truth and who's not. I mean, I know some people are great actors. Yeah, but you would know. And so if a guy tells you straight up, oh, you know, I, I, I think three years we're going to have to, and then you get married and then you begin to struggle over that, he has told you already. So the point is, before you get into these conversations, you need to have some kind of uh, subtle engagements. No, it's not, it's not hard bagging. Very true indeed. So we, we need to, in fact, there's so much I want to ask. But you can, of <laughs> course, attend the Hands on Deck conference where you get to ask questions directly. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank if you. I to enjoy more of these our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.